Welcome, everybody. My name is Bruce Olson. I am joined by Anahata Mijo. Thanks for taking time out of your schedule today to find out about Ease 5. Now let's look at what we will be covering in the next hour. First, we will look at a brief introduction and overview of Ease 5. Next, we will show how to draw a room and add surface properties, sources, and receivers. After that, we will investigate the sound system design tools, and finally, we will investigate the acoustical room design tools. This Ease 5 first edition overview will cover the following topics. We'll explain the concept of this new software and our vision for the next releases. Then we will give you an overview of the features that are included in this edition. And finally, we'll talk about our feature development and outlook for the future. This first release is on a new platform. It includes long-awaited improvements in usability and workflows. It includes innovations with a focus on fast entry of room geometry and easy configuration of sound systems and room acoustics. The existing calculation modules continue to be used and will be updated in subsequent releases. The new software is based on current technologies and modern agile development principles. It's done at a very high quality level. It gives us a solid foundation for further innovations and sets us up for continuous new feature delivery. Focus of the first editions is on these six items, the modern user interface, the fast room entry, management of materials, acoustic parameters, loudspeaker configuration, and the calculation modules. In the calculation modules, the Ease 5 versions include things like speech spectrum selection, a cumulative distribution graph, and the ability to print values in the mouse mode for room mapping. When we start with Ease, we can import models and 3D drawings. We can import DWG files from CAD tools such as Autodesk, AutoCAD, or Trimble SketchUp Pro. We don't bring in SketchUp files, but you would convert the SketchUp file to a AutoCAD drawing file, and then you can import that directly. We can do modeling based on drawings. Anna will show that to you in a few minutes. We can do that by loading floor plans and section views in image file formats. And then we can infer coordinates from those section drawings. And then finally, we can also import and export Ease 4 projects so that we can use existing projects, upgrade them, even send them back to Ease 4 for somebody who does not have Ease 5. When we create the 3D model, it has a new lightweight CAD editor, allows snapping of vertices, midpoints, surfaces, and other elements, it gives us relative and absolute coordinates, it allows us to restrict to specific axes or planes, allows us to derive intersections from various room elements. We can freely choose what the reference point is for moving or adding other points. And we use all of the same tools for inserting the other room elements as well. We can move, duplicate, extrude, or mirror based on new workflows. We can group using multi-selection and selection sets. We can draw faces in faces to add wall panels, doors, and those kinds of things. We can do measurement of distances and delays. We can slice all of the orthogonal views to restrict how much of the drawing is shown. And we've got some geometrical analysis tools that highlight holes and stacked faces in the model. It has a clear software structure and an environment. For loudspeakers, we have an extensive loudspeaker database, more than 2,500 products from 140 different loudspeaker companies that include line arrays and steerable columns. Database management, including filtering and searching for any of the loudspeakers in the database. To handle loudspeakers, we can insert, configure, and fine tune the sound system. I'll show that a little bit later. We use the drawing tool set uh, of the CAD editor in order to do that. We can add signal processing functions for loudspeakers and groups of loudspeakers. And the loudspeakers table allows exporting and viewing all of the loudspeakers. 
We can do direct line array configuration, the configurator, and we can import configuration files for those line arrays. When we take a look at surface materials, we've got an extensive review database of materials, can be grouped by categories. We can look at the materials that are in use, the generic database, the curated database, or even a custom materials database of your own materials along with the materials editor to allow entering those materials. We have a materials in use window. All the materials are shown as tiles, includes key information for a good overview and allows us to change those materials quickly. For receivers, we've got audience areas. They are virtual planes that are used for mappings and calculation. Uh, we can set the ear height to a number of different ear height settings. They now can consist of any number of points and we can create them by selecting faces and creating areas above them. Listener seats represent important listening positions or measurement positions. We again can use the same tool set and these can also be inserted on faces and on audience areas. For direct field mapping, we've got fast direct field mapping and coverage analysis, arrival times, propagation delays, loudspeaker coverage overlap, initial time delay gap, all of these things that you've known uh, if you've used ease 4 in the past. Statistical features based on iRing, we've got an acoustical parameters view now that assembles all of the parameters that are used for the acoustic simulations allows us to import uh, measured reverberation time and background noise levels, and also allows us to choose what sort of input signal we are using. We can map on faces, audience areas, and listener seats a variety of different measures similar to what we do in Ease 4. For ray tracing and reflection analysis, we can also do a standard mapping and add reflections to that. We can analyze local reverberation times. We can look at reflection patterns in Ease Junior up to third order and a thousand thousand rays, but in the standard and the pro versions, we can have no limits. We can also analyze those reflectograms looking at arrival times, levels, and directions. We can use a measurement probe to analyze them in greater depth. With the Aura module, this gives us a full-length analysis along with scattering, uses advanced ray tracing functions, and gives us acoustic results based on ISO 3382 and IEC 60268 Part 16. Also, we can do a full-length mapping with a variety of different metrics as well. And then we can look at that in probe as well and investigate further that response analysis. We can do oralization using the EARS module, it performs oralizations based on the direct sound, the ray tracing, and the full length response calculations. Many different effects can be made audible using that EARS oralization module, such as listener versus loudspeaker location and orientation, differences in levels and directions, and so on. Let me pass this now back to Anna and she will take you into some of the drawing tools. So now let's dive in. A lot of those things that Bruce briefly showed, you'll see now uh, in the actual program. And please remember to use the Q&A for any questions as, as they come up and we'll try to answer as much as possible. So we're gonna start by building a new project. So uh, this is what it'll look like when I open my ES5. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna load some drawings to use them for reference. I have both SI units and US units. I'm gonna work in US units. So I have a floor plan and I'm gonna define an anchor point in one of these corners. And I'm gonna scale it using the longest dimension that I have. That's going to be these 90 feet. So then that anchor, I want it to be at minus nine feet, zero and zero. And my scale, it's going to be 90 feet. So that minus nine comes from dividing this 18 in two. So I want my origin to be right here in the middle of that uh, stage wall. I'm going to 
go back to file and load one more drawing. The side will give me the heights. So the first thing I need to do is to tell is that this is a section drawing. So now the orientation is correct. And then I'm gonna set my anchor point in this corner. And I'm gonna use this 61 and a half for my scale. The origin should be at 000 and 61.5. However, I don't want that drawing to be in the middle of my model. So I'm gonna displace that by 55 feet along the X. So then it's to the side and it's useful for me to build my model that way. For this specific case, I don't need my third drawing that I had there. So I'm just gonna start working from these two. Now I'm gonna build my floor. And because I'm gonna be working from the plan view, I'm gonna look at this height here. This is six feet. So let's go to presentation. I'm gonna go to my plan view and I'm gonna go to my parallel projection. If I click again on plan view, it starts rotating so I can position it in any way that I want. And then I can create my initial phases. So I'm gonna select one of these corners. I'm gonna start from here. I'm gonna position the next. Then I'm gonna hover over this corner with my Z key. I'm gonna fix my Z axis and then I'm gonna enter that six feet. And then because it's a plane, it already has three points. I don't need to worry about the height of my fourth vertex. And then when I press C, then it'll close my face. Having created that face, I'm gonna mirror that. That makes it really easy to add my third phase. Now with those three, I can also finish with my stage phase. I'm going to fix my X just so I have a straight line there and close. Okay, going back to my 3D view, this is what we have for now. Let's go to add the big side walls. So let me zoom out a little bit and position it that way. We're still using the polygon, so I'm going to start from this corner. I'm going to fix my Z and go here to get the height. So I could enter numerically like I did before, or I can use my drawing. Then from this corner, I'm going to fix my Z again and find my other height. And then I just close it using the points that are already there. So I have a side wall. However, because this uh, room has a balcony, I need to create a cut on this side. So I'm gonna use facing face to do that. And then the easiest way is probably if I go to my side view and I can just copy that. So I'm gonna create that opening here, here, and there we go. So now we have the side wall. Uh, because I created a face in face, it means that it also created that smaller face. I'm gonna delete it. And I'm gonna go and mirror my side wall. So I have the two side walls. I'm gonna create the back walls next. So I'm gonna use that one. And then if I fix my Z and take my height from here, I already have all the points that I need. Again, I'm gonna mirror and create the third one. And then I'm gonna take those three and I'm gonna duplicate them up because they happen to have the same dimension. Then I'm gonna create the front of my balcony. So 
one thing I can do is I can insert the first two points that I already have there. For the next point, I know I need to be exactly above here. So I'm gonna hover and press Z. And then just go to that height. Then press Z once more and close. Mirror that and create my next one. Okay. Let's continue with the bottom of the balcony. And then the top of the balcony. So these ones, of course, are not a single plane. I need to create them separately. I also have all the points to create my wall in this stage. And finally, I'm going to create my ceiling. So I'm going to divide it in two because, again, it's not single plane. Okay. So you see we have created a really, really quick model and I didn't use precise coordinates all the time. So there might be uh, smaller holes there. Um, let's go to acoustic parameters and we see that we have a red volume there. So something is not exactly right. Let's go to presentation and ask Ease to show us where the holes are. So when I look at faces, um, if I'm hovering on the back side of them, their border should be very light. The thick border is the inside. So I can see that this face is reversed. So I'm going to invert it. And then it seems that that was the only error there. So now the volume has turned to green. We can close the room perfectly. Now we're going to add some materials. We saw that we have 32 seconds of reverberation time. So let's see what that means. I'm going to go to materials in use. Oh, actually, before that, I'm going to turn off my drawings. I don't need them anymore. And I'm going to make this one a little bit smaller. So currently all my materials are 100% reflective. Of course, that creates a ridiculous uh, reverberation time. I'm gonna go and choose some materials. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this massive construction and I'm gonna apply to all of them. So just by having a material that is not theoretical, but, but real reflective in real life, we went from 32 to 4.6. It's of course still too high. So I'm gonna get some light upholstery and I'm gonna apply it to my audience faces. So now if I hover here, I can see my seating and I can see the rest is massive construction. This I symbol uh, gives us more information about the type of material that I selected. And from this initial list, generic materials, these are, as the name implies, very generic and not specific for manufacturing for anything like that. So we created these materials as a reference. And then you can see that below that, it's a very, very long list of materials, and you can see the the reference, where they come from, and, and the data for all of them. So let's see what adding the audience did. Now we're at 1.2. Another way to add a material is to select it first, and then my pointer becomes a bucket. And then I can just go around and apply to one face at a time. So now I'm doing light construction for all my walls. So now I have light construction, massive construction, and seating. And finally, we are at 1.1. So let's say that was our goal. So we're happy with that.
the next thing we can do is let's start adding sources. So I'm going to close my materials in use. And then we're going to go to the next tab. That's the loudspeakers tab. And we're going to add a couple of sources. To make it easier to add something here on stage, I'm going to go to my presentation view. And I'm going to slice my room and just keep only the bottom. So from loudspeakers, I'm going to go and find the talker. And then I'm going to put it somewhere on stage. I'm going to click on Z. And I'm going to go 5 point, sorry, 5.5 5 feet. So there's my talker. And I can label that. Then I'm going to go and insert a line array. This time I'm going to click anywhere and I'm just going to come here and enter the location where I want it. So I want it at zero minus 16, no, sorry, minus 11.5 feet and 25.5 feet. And for US units, You'll notice that I can do decimal feet or feet and inches. It'll read them either way. And then I'm going to enter six degrees. Now I need to get off those slices so we can see. And now let's go to a side view. I'm going to select the line array. And you'll see that now a configurator window has opened. And the line array is not really sending much sound down to the audience in the bottom. So we're going to adjust it. We're going to use some angles here at the top. I'm going to then turn it down. And then we want to send some to the lower part. And we need to add one more box. So now we have that covering that bottom. And maybe we do need to tilt it a little bit more. Anyway, so we can play around with that location. We can play around with uh, display angles. And Bruce will show you a lot more about loudspeakers. Now that we have the sources, we want to go to receivers. And we're going to choose all the audience faces that we have, and we're gonna add areas above them. So now we have audience areas. These are the mapping planes or calculation planes. So they're not physical entities. We can also select the audience area icon and then go and select the face. In that case, I've selected my stage. And you'll notice uh, if you're an eSport user that I have an audience area that has more than four corners. And I can label that stage, but I can also adjust it to a standing height. So all the other ones were by default sitting height and my stage is standing height. And then besides audience areas, I can also add listener seats. So Let's add something here near the front. So this guy is going to be mainly front. Then we'll go and add something in the back. Oops. Do that again. Put it there, maybe one in the balcony front, maybe the one, one in the corner. And we can label all of them. So this is balcony corner. This is balcony front. This is back center. Okay, 
I'm gonna close this. So now we have audience in seats as well as in areas. And notice that both loudspeakers and seats have priority of selection. So I don't need to hover inside like I'm doing with the faces. I'm using my control key and the scroll to hover inside those areas. For loudspeakers, those are the first item that gets priority of selection when I hover over them. Okay, now let's go back to our acoustic parameters and let's look in more detail at what we have there. We have air properties and we can change those if we need to. Volume, we already saw that it changes as we close holes in the room. It calculates surface and it gives us an average absorption coefficient. We can add a measure reverberation time. So let's say that, that we had measured that to be 1.2 seconds. So then it'll create a curve to give us that mid band 1.2 second reverberation time. And the calculated one, of course, it's the one that is calculated by iron depending on the materials we applied. But we can tell the program to use either one the measure one or the calculated one when we go into standard mapping. So that's what this switch is about. We can also add noise. So I'm gonna copy the values for an NC35. So I'm gonna go to my octave and I'm gonna paste those values. And then we'll have an NC35 noise there. And we also have a switch if we want to use or not use that noise. And finally, we have an input signal. So we're able to choose between different types of signals. When we're ready with the room, we can go and do calculations. So I'm going to go into room mapping. And then in room mapping, I'm going to create a standard map. I'm going to use my line array. I'm going to map to areas. Notice that this module still uses only audience areas that have four corners. So my stage has been automatically divided into four sections. And under groups, I can select all four of them uh, just by selecting stage. So it's added as a group. And then I can run a calculation. Okay. So I'm going to pass it on back to Bruce. Let's talk a little bit about sound system design. So I'm going to open up an existing project that I had done some years ago, originally in Ease 4, but I've now converted it to an Ease 5 project. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to save this with a new file name here. Because I'm going to be making some changes to this. So, all right. So here we have a room that is somewhat complex. It's got a variety of loudspeakers in the back variety of different loudspeakers up front. We'll talk about all of those in just a moment. First thing I want to look at is here in the loudspeakers tab, we've got a listing of all the loudspeakers. And if I click on this little down arrow here, I can see all of my existing loudspeakers that are in the project. I've got six different loudspeakers. And if I wanted to add more of those, I would be able to directly add that and then be able to insert additional loudspeakers of that type in the drawing if that's what I wanted to do. Let's uh, take a look at the loudspeakers table, first of all. So with this complex system, we've got quite a number of loudspeakers in here. 
You can see them all listed here. We get some simple information about them, the position, the orientation, what the gain is, what the delays are set to, what processing is attached to each of these loudspeakers. And we can then take a look at scrolling over the table. Notice that in the drawing, those devices are being highlighted where they are in the drawing. Conversely, we can do the same thing from the drawing where I can hover over a specific loudspeaker and it's going to highlight for me in the table what loudspeaker that actually is. So let's go ahead and select one of these line arrays here. And as you saw before, when Anna put in the line array, it allowed us to configure that line array using the, the configurator over here on the right-hand side. Here I've got one where I've got a variety of different boxes available for this. As I hover over them on the right-hand side here, I can see where I could add in another box of that type. Sometimes it would replace entire loudspeakers or it would uh, be able to add them in between. And as I move across to different loudspeakers, I can see what all of the various configurations are. Now, if I choose a simple point source loudspeaker, that does not show up in the configurator. The configurator is only used for those things that are line arrays. All right, next let's take, let's go back to our default window mode here. And I'm going to select one of these back uh, VIP loudspeakers here. And let's take a look at what we can do with filters. So here is that loudspeaker that's chosen, happens to be labeled UB4. We can see that up here in the properties of the loudspeaker, the position or orientation and the gain. But now we've got a, a set of DSP filters that we can add. By default, there's always a gain and a delay. And sometimes there's a third octave filter, especially for imported loudspeakers like this, where this is not something that you can add. It only comes because this was imported from Ease 4. But now for this loudspeaker, I could go ahead and add a peak filter. When I do that, I can adjust all the various parameters for that. So I can change the Q of it. I can change the gain and I'm using my scroll wheel to scroll up and down here, or I can enter in a value, same thing with the frequency. So I can make all of my adjustments of those things. I've also got a solo button, which means that you can see that my high and low pass filters were removed. Now I'm looking at just that filter, that peaking filter, and no others or I can bypass it. Now you see that the high and low pass filters are still there, but I've bypassed that. So whatever these settings are, this is what will be translated to the calculation module. Uh, we've got a trash can here to remove filters except for the gain and delay. So next, let's have a look at some processing blocks. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this over here. I can reconfigure this interface. And in this case, I'm going to put these side by side so we can see them. I still have this loudspeaker selected. That's the VIP loudspeaker. I can take a look at all of these different processing blocks. Notice here that I've got them divided up. When I hover over the front fills, I can see that they're all highlighted in the model. Same for the house subs portable mains, portable subs, and house mains. When I hover over the uh, loudspeakers, I see that the tile then gets highlighted over on the left-hand side. So at the moment, I haven't got any of my VIP loudspeakers added. So let's take a look at how we create these processing block groups. So here I've got a bunch of unassigned loudspeakers because I haven't got anything selected. And I'm going to simply drag them over here. I'm going to create a new group. So I'm going to grab each of these and drag them over here into this group of loudspeakers. And once I've done that, now I can select that block and I can come up here and I can name it. I'm going to call that VIP, 
And then I know, well, my first estimate of a delay is 128 milliseconds. So I'm going to enter that here. Notice that that then gets entered into the filters. In this case, the filters that we're looking at is for this processing block. And that delay that I entered in here for the processing block is then entered into that delay tile. So these are linked. Same thing happens with the gain. I can turn the gain down. You can see it adjusted over there in the tile, as well as being adjusted in the upper left. Okay, and then if I've got loudspeakers in a block, I can remove them by dragging it to the location down over here, and then I can add those back into this block if I want to. Okay, the next thing that we want to take a look at is here we've created sort of automatic groups of loudspeakers based on what sort of common processing am I going to have for each of these locations. Here the front fields have got 15 milliseconds of delay, for instance. What if I want to create an arbitrary choice of loudspeakers? So I can come here and select a bunch of the loudspeakers. So I'm going to uh, create my house system. So here's my house mains. I'm going to control click and choose the other side. I'm going to choose the subwoofers for that. So I've selected four things. You can see in the tiles that they are part of two different processing blocks. Once I've done that, if I go over here to the tools menu, I can store that as a selection set, what we call a selection set. I'm going to label that. It's going to be called the house system. Now, when I hover over any of those loudspeakers that are included, you can see over on the lower left that that one is part of the house mains, but it's also in the selection sets part of the house system. Here, this is part of house mains. I should have added that one into this system. So I can do that by adding that. It's going to select everything that's there. I'm going to add this to the selection and then I'm going to update it. So now I've got five loudspeakers in that system. And here we can see each of the loudspeakers that are part of that system. Let's do the same thing for the portable system. So I'm going to select my portable loudspeaker systems here. I'm going to store us that selection. I'm going to label it as my portable system. Okay, and again, I can take a look at what's included in that system. We have the left and right uh, subs and we have the left and right main arrays. So we can create all of those as different system sets. So I'm going to save. I've got a save icon up here in the very top that allows me to save this file. And now let's take a look at some calculations from this room. So I'm going to come over here to room mapping again, like Anna did. This one will take a little bit longer to load. I've got quite a few loudspeakers in here. There we go. Give it a moment to load all the loudspeakers. Okay, there's a model. And if we went into our standard mapping, I just wanted to show you a couple of things here. So what we've already got implemented is if I go to loudspeaker group, I can now see um, these processing blocks over here that were made as groups. The next step is to actually then add our selection sets as possible additional loudspeaker groups. So we'd have both the processing blocks selection set as well as the, or the processing, processing blocks as groups and the selection sets will be next up added to this list. So I can choose those in order to choose my loudspeakers for the selection sets, Anna will show you a little bit more uh, later on, but for other items, when we combine together audience areas, for instance, here we've got a number of 
of audience areas that consist of more than four points in this model. When I look at the groups of audience areas here, I can see them all combined together. When I select those, that, that would allow me to map to those. So all of these groups will also benefit from the selection sets and will be populated by those selection sets as well. Okay, so let's close that. And then the last thing that I wanted to show you, and then we'll take some more questions again. Whoops, I'll let it respond there, is under the windows, we had a default layout, which is used for drawing, but then we also have a sound system layout. In the future, we will have configurable layouts so that you can save your own configurations. But at the moment, now with the sound system layout here, if I select a loudspeaker in here, it fills in those filters for that uh, loudspeaker system. If I came back to my selection sets here and chose that, if I choose one of those systems, I can now see the uh, filters for that. That's to still to be added, or we can look at individual loudspeakers, or we can choose one of these processing blocks. So this gives you a complete overview of everything that you've got in the sound system and allows you to very quickly configure it, configure all of the sound systems, and then in this loudspeaker table, this copy button here, this copy icon allows me to copy everything that's in this loudspeaker table out to a common separated value for use in importing it into ease. Okay, I think that's everything. So we're back here. Now I'm going to go and open a new model. And this one, it's going to be my pack from acoustics. So this is a high school auditorium. And we're going to add some wall panels uh, to these walls. So let's see what the room looks like now. It's one second. so. I guess it's not too bad, uh, but let's say we still wanted to add some panels on the sides. And the panels I'm gonna add, just so you know, I have I have a drawing here that shows me uh, where I need to add those panels. So that's where I'm taking uh, dimensions from. So I'm gonna go to surfaces. I'm gonna select my side wall and I'm gonna choose facing face. From this corner, I'm going to click R to use relative coordinates. And I'm going to go 0, minus 18.5 feet, and then 3.5 feet. Eleven feet up. Y minus 6 feet down. Z and then I can just click here and close it. So I, I created a hole like we did before and there's also a, a inside face in there. Now I'm going to use that to duplicate and then I'm going to duplicate it down the Y and it's going to be minus seven feet four inches. And then I'm going to duplicate the next one based on that one. So I can also use my drawing there. And finally, I'm going to create two more. So I have my five panels there. Only the first one was created as a whole. So I'm going to go back to facing face and I'm going to create the holes for them. By creating those holes, I have now added duplicate faces because I was only using those for reference. So now I'm just going to delete them and now I have single faces and I have a large face with five holes. 
and we can see the definition of the face, all the vertices, as well as all the holes. I can delete a hole, as you can see, and of course I can also delete the face, and I'm gonna go back. So I have my, my five holes. Now I'm gonna create some panels in the opposite side. So I'm gonna go to my side view, and I'm going to click again to make sure that my stage is on the left. I'm going to go to parallel and I'm going to select my side wall. So from my side wall, I'm going to go to face in face. And I'm going to create the same holes. So now I'm using the panels on the opposite end to show me where things are. And actually, I'm going to go a little bit out of the parallel so you can see what's happening for the last one, which is in this other phase. So when I do face in face, I'm selecting the panel back there, but it's drawing it on the face that I have selected. Okay. So for those of you who are eSport users, you see a big difference from what we were doing before. Now we have all those panels. I'm going to select the five panels there. I'm going to select the five panels here. And I'm going to add them to a selection set. So this is side wall panels. OK. Now we're going to add a few more uh, panels. We're going to add some in the back here. Let me. No, let me go back to this view. I'm going to close that. And we're now going to add a panel to this wall. So I'm going to go back to facing face. Again, from the corner there, I'm going to go relative minus one foot then zero, and then three feet. Oops, I think that went three inches rather than feet. Try that again. Relative, minus one foot, and then three feet. There we go. I'm going to go Z, six feet, X, eight feet, Come on. From here, X minus eight feet, and then Z and close. So even though this wall is not perfectly aligned with the X axis, I was still able to use those coordinates because I'm creating a face in a face. So it stays in the plane where that face is. I could also duplicate it like I did for the other one. So if I duplicate it here, the second wall is at a slightly different angle, but I'm still able to use it. And as you can see, it's going to be just displaced slightly. So then I can delete the one outside. And then finally, I can create the last one. Again, I'm going to go relative, minus one, zero, three feet up, and then Z, six feet, X minus 3.2 feet, Z, and close. And once I have those three, I can select them and mirror them to the other side. So this time I'll use them to create the holes. And then I need to be careful about which one I need to delete.
So you can see that this one is inside. Okay, and then the last one, I'm gonna add a facing face. And then again, that's the one inside. And there we go. So I'm gonna group those panels, go to tools, start selection set. And that's gonna be back wall panels. Okay. So let's go to my materials in use. And you'll notice that all the panels have been added in the default 100% reflective material. So you can come here and do an absorber and then apply to all of them. Now we're at 0.96 and I have added all of those. Now, if I needed to add a few more, Let's go to this back wall and do more facing face. I'm going to go from this corner. I'm going to do relative minus one feet, three feet. And I'm going to go Z, six, then X minus six, and then Z. And close. And I'm going to duplicate that. We're going X, X minus eight. And then Duplicate, duplicate, duplicate it one more. And then I'm going to create my holes. And then finally, I'm going to add a top row. So I'm going to duplicate that from here on the Z, eight feet. So you can see that the panel, it's taller than the wall. So I'm going to select the panel and I'm going to move the vertex. I'm going to move this vertex down by four feet. And this one down by four feet. Z minus four feet. I guess I had already moved it. So move it, Z minus four feet. So now that we have that, I can again use my duplicate to copy one two and three times and add them as panels on my wall. And there we go. Finally, I'll delete that and I have a face with the eight holes. Now, those are also reflective at this moment. So, I'm going to add absorber to them. And I'm going to go to my selection sets and I need to add those panels. So, back wall panels, I'm going to recall that set. I'm going to use control and pick the additional panels. 
and then add them to definitions, and now there's 14 of them. And then we're at 0.95 regression time. So we have added a number of panels. Of course, we can still add more, but that should be enough for now. Okay. So Anna, why don't you talk about why some of your faces are green? Okay, so as you can see, the faces that are green, for example, this one or these side ones are all faces that are exposed on both sides. So it's what E4 used to call a twofold. So it's a face that has a front and a back, as opposed to faces that are in the limits of the drawing where they only are exposed on one side. And then in order to do that for any face, I just need to tell is that I need to add a back side. And as soon as I add a back side, that's going to turn green and it's going to add an extra face there. Of course, that would then ruin my volume because I've created an active face on the outside of the drawing, but that's how they work. Notice uh, when she hovers over them that it says twofold configuration. If I select it, then in the information that you're going to see here, you'll see the type of phase, the dimensions, and it says twofold configuration. And then why don't you invert that one? The twofold phase? Yep. Now it is turned orange and shows you a warning that the faces are stacked incorrectly. So that means as you use the control key to select, there are two faces that are very near each other and you can roll between them and you'll need to choose whichever one is the correct material to invert it back to get back to the correct orientation. Yeah, so so it's not a single phase like in E4 anymore. It's two phases. So if you invert one, then you're still exposing the wrong side. And I was going to say all our ceiling clouds are going to be like that, as you can see. They're all green. They're all double-sided phases. Handrails, balcony fronts, anything like that. So thank you for joining us today. We are going to try to post this video also to our social channels. So you'll be able to watch it again, maybe pause it and try to recreate some of the things we did. We have posted other videos that are very helpful that explain tools. And as always, we recommend download a trial. If you haven't, try it on your own. Use the user's guide well as a good help. We have full trainings for anyone who's ready to jump on it. Okay, thank you everybody.